you will only see this here. This is an exclusive. I have come across archival footage of Stephen King's process when he was writing the novel It. Hey everybody, Lindsay here, and this is my review for It Chapter 2. So I went and saw It Chapter 2. I was excited to see this movie. Um, I, I really like Stephen King a lot. I love the stories that he tells. I love the characters that he creates. I just love the whole vibe that his stories have. So I was very excited to see this film. I saw the first one. It was alright. It was pretty good. It was enjoyable. It was entertaining. This one, the basic storyline is it's 27 years after the events of the first film and it has come back and so the adult versions of the kids that we followed in chapter one need to come back and battle Pennywise once again. Overall, I was very entertained by it. There are some very genuinely creepy imagery in this film. Uh, there are performances that are very, very good and very well done. Even though the runtime is two hours and 50 minutes, which may keep some people away, I don't think it really drug at all too much, um, at least not for very long. I was entertained throughout the entire thing. Um, there was never a point where I'm like, okay, let's get on with this. That never happened. So if you're kind of gun shy about the two hour and 50 minute runtime, I wouldn't be, because like I said, I, th I think they keep the pace and they keep jumping around enough to where uh, things are always hopping. We didn't stop it. Pennywise. The clown. I agree with most of the reviews that have come out beforehand in saying that Bill Hader is probably the best thing in this film. His performance is just great. He is funny. Um, you could <laughs> he does such a good job of going through such a range of emotions that his character is very well rounded. I mean, you see, you see the humor, you see the fear, you see um, the uncertainty and how unsure he is at times and how he struggles with things going on in his life. He, he is such a good actor. And I've noticed this a lot with actors that start out in the comedic realm. They are very good at taking that turn over to drama. And with him, it's, it's seamless. He's, he's just a very, very talented person and he's fun to watch on screen. The guy that plays Eddie, he also does a, a very good job. He was probably the second best as far as acting and performing and characterization. Bill Skarsgård does a fine job again as Pennywise. We don't see him as much in this film as we did in the first one. And there's also a lot of flashbacks. Like you'll be in the middle of a scene that takes place present day and it'll seamlessly do like a camera transition or movement and all of a sudden you're 27 years previous. And there there's some pretty cool transitions in this film. Um, one at the beginning is, is really, really cool that I liked. Now I'm gonna get into the stuff that I didn't quite care for. I think the biggest detriment of this film is in um, how little characterization there is with the adult versions of these characters. There's not a lot to them. I mean, the actors are doing their best with what they're given, but they're just not given very much as far as character development. I mean, we know how these kids were when they were kids, but we don't get a lot of who they are as adults. And the biggest example of that, I think, is in the Ben Hanscom character, because pretty much the only thing to his character was he was a fat kid loser and now he's hot. And that's it. That's like all there is to him. There's just kind of this disconnect between some of the adult characters and the child characters. And I wish, I mean, this film is two hours and 50 minutes, but I wish they could have found some time to bridge that gap between the child and adult versions of these characters because the adult versions are very weak 
compared to the child versions. To the losers. There are a lot of jump scares in this film, but they don't rely on it as much as they did in the first chapter, I don't think. And they, there are some very creepy moments during this film and some good tension building. And so some of the jump scares are a little more earned um, than in most other horror films that overutilize the jump scare. And going back to the lack of characterization in some, um, the biggest issue with that is the only motivation we get for these adult characters' actions is what happened to them in the first film. And for me, it wasn't quite enough. One other thing that I did like about this film is that they kind of brought forth the overall theme for the film. This may not have been the theme for the original novel, but that's definitely the theme for these two movies. And that is getting over the past. Letting go of those things that you are dwelling on, coming to grips with who you are as an adult and how things that happened in your childhood has shaped you into that adult. Childhood traumas, things like that. But big picture is let go of the past so you can move on in the future. Um, I'm going to talk about the ending now. So if you have not seen the film, skip to this time code. The ending uh, was a bit of a mess. Um, there was a lot of cool sequences and some cool imagery and things going on and stuff like that. Um, but it was a little bit muddled as far as the ritual of Chud and how that was supposed to work and did it work and was all that ending stuff part of the ritual and just how that mixed in with all the Native American stuff because it was it was pretty hazy. But at least it was better than the ending of part two of the television version. So at least they, at least they accomplished that. <laughs> because each of the characters has to kind of face their own demons and finally get over those fears that they have and that self-doubt. Like, like with Bill's character, how he blames himself for his brother's death and the whole thing with um, Richie, Bill Hader's character, being gay and Eddie feeling like he's just scared of everything. He finally gets over that. So they finally get over uh, their hangups. And that seems to be what the last part of this ritual is. I have no idea. I just wish they would have made that a little more clear because evidently Mike Hanlon's character lied to them about something, about what really happened during the original ritual that the Native Americans tried to do, and that wasn't extremely clear. Um, but it was very cool seeing a big giant Pennywise spider done right. Uh, running around and messing stuff up. That was that was pretty cool to see. Hello. Okay, my final thoughts about this film. I would definitely recommend this, even if you're not a huge fan of the first one. There is some of the weirdest stuff I've ever seen in a film <laughs> in this movie. Just bizarre and surreal and weird and creepy and it's not going to be scary to everyone, but visually it's very unique and just odd. And it's, it's cool that a major studio made a film like this that has so much crazy crap going on in it. And I'm glad they did. I'm glad Stephen King is having another renaissance. I think this is like his fourth renaissance. <laughs> Seems like every generation he pops back up again and gets huge. And, and so it's, it's great to see his movies being done again and his stories being told again and stories of his that we haven't seen brought to the big screen being brought to the big screen. Um, because before this movie, there was a preview for Dr. Sleep, which is the uh, sequel to The Shining and that looks that looks really cool. So, so yay Stephen King. Well, that's going to do it for this review. So as for this video, this is Lindsay signing off. I'll check you later.